Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 61 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. We've got a lot to go over today, so let's dig in. The past two weeks have been something of a roller coaster for expectations for the Starship program. In the days immediately following the launch, it was hard to look at the damage to the launch pad and the surrounding infrastructure and not expect a significant delay before the next attempt. Since that time, however, we have learned a lot that makes the outlook much brighter. Thanks in large part to a question and answer session Elon had on Twitter Spaces last week, we now know that the damage to the launch pad is not as bad as it initially appeared. Elon stated that he expects Stage Zero and the next Starship and Super Heavy to be ready as soon as mid-June. <laughs> the big unknown seems to be related to the flight termination systems on the two vehicles. We now know that the FTS charges were triggered about 40 seconds before the vehicles finally exploded. Apparently, the charges were not sufficient for the job and the flight termination system will have to be requalified before SpaceX is cleared for the next launch. At Starbase, however, SpaceX shows no signs of slowing down. Friday morning, Booster 11's aft section was moved into Mega Bay for stacking as SpaceX continues to push forward with vehicle production. That evening, Booster 11's partial liquid oxygen tank was lifted and stacked onto the newly arrived aft section, completing the LOX tank on this latest Super Heavy. On Sunday afternoon, over at the Sanchez site, the Red Buckner LTR 1220 crane began lifting and installing the white Mega Bay steel on the prefabrication jigs. First thing Monday morning, the orbital launch mount work platform and the Raptor installation stand were driven back down Highway 4 as they were returned to the launch site. A short time later, crews began installing scaffolding around the top of the orbital launch mount as SpaceX continues their effort to recover from the integrated flight test. Over in High Bay, Ship 29's nose cone was lifted and stacked on top of its payload section as SpaceX begins stacking on yet another Starship. That afternoon, the busy pace at the build site continued with the delivery of a couple of wood boxes. Let us know below in the comments what you think might be inside. In the early hours of Tuesday morning, crews removed several of the cladding panels from the lower levels of the launch tower after they were damaged during the launch. Later Tuesday, crews cut out a new doorway from the side of the launch mount, allowing for access from the new staircase that has been installed since the launch. Wednesday morning over at Suborbital Test Stand A, one of the Grove cranes lifted the main structure of the ship's sea level puck shucker and removed it from the stand. That afternoon, workers were seen installing a steel patch over the hole on the LOX cryo shell that was punctured by debris during the launch last month. This may indicate that the inner LOX tank was undamaged. On Thursday morning, Ship 29's forward dome section was moved into High Bay ahead of stacking with the newly joined nose cone and payload sections. Throughout the week, crews continued to make good progress on assembling the first two prefabricated corners for the new Mega Bay. Thursday evening, the 26.1 test tank at the Massey site underwent a cryo test on the Can Crusher's base. It is not yet known if the thrust rams were used during this test. Thanks to Mauricio with RGV Aerial Photography, we have a few excellent overhead shots to share as well. Just inside the main gate at the Sanchez site is where the new water-cooled plates and associated piping are being prepared for installation. It also looks like one concrete pour remains to complete the foundation of the new Mega Bay. Nearby, the steel for the first level of the building has been staged for installation in the near future. On the other side of the Star Factory, work continues to prepare for what is believed to be an extension of the building and includes a large deep pit, possibly for hydraulics. And down at the launch site, much of the debris from the launch has now been cleaned up, paving the way for repairs and upgrades as SpaceX works towards the second integrated flight test. Friday in Florida, our new Cape Cam caught Falcon 9 Booster 1078 as it lifted off from SLC-40 for the O3B M-Power 3 and 4 mission. Sunday evening, the much-delayed Falcon Heavy Viasat 3 mission finally launched from Historic Launch Complex 39A in what was a rare, fully expendable mission from SpaceX.
Shortly before lunchtime on Monday, SpaceX vessel Bob returned to Port Canaveral, having successfully recovered both fairing halves from the O3B Empower 3 and 4 launch. The next afternoon, tug Nicole Foss, a recent addition to the SpaceX fleet, towed just read the instructions into port with B-1078 from that same mission. Wednesday, the booster was lifted off the drone ship and placed on the dock to be prepared for transport back to Hangar X. Early Thursday, SpaceX had their third launch in six days from the Cape as B-1069 took to the skies for the Starlink Group 5-6 mission. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.